performance! Welcome back! I'm back again to talk about the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X and this time about gaming performance as well as something that I discovered while running the gaming benchmarks. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving me a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos. I hinted about an issue in the last video and I wanted to give more time for Lenovo to respond before posting this. Lenovo also just released a new video concerning X-Power, but unfortunately it's just the same marketing talk as the prior videos without any more in-depth information. I left a link to the video in the description if you would like to check it out. I'll start to address the issue I noticed and then move on to explain why I believe it to be misleading by Lenovo and important but not a huge deal in real world applications as we will also see in the gaming benchmark. When running the benchmarks I noticed occasionally that the battery would drop down even though I was plugged in so I ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark three times concurrently in both performance and intelligent cooling setting and checked the data. When running the laptop standalone without a external monitor connected, both performance and intelligent cooling draws up to 104 watts of power from the wall socket. As we only have the option to charge via USB-C and this laptop is limited to 100 watts of maximum charging capacity, this is the capped power supply for the laptop. I have confirmed this with Lenovo and there is no possibility to charge with up to 130 watts for example, which Dell has succeeded in doing. Battery remains steady at around 50 watts. Intelligent cooling is able to sustain the laptop with the power supplied from the wall socket with only minuscule dips into the battery. But when running in performance mode, the laptop is allowed to draw more electricity than what the charger can supply and it then resorts to leach of the internal battery. This issue is most likely to occur during heavy gaming use but just looking at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark times 3, we can calculate a hourly drain of around 6 watt hours or 100% battery drain in 12 hours. After this was identified, I've spoken to Lenovo's customer support who has logged in and confirmed all my drivers and settings and also attempted some troubleshooting. They were unable to solve the issue and then resolved to contacting Lenovo Central for more information. And this was their first response. It depends on your charger size and what you are doing in performance mode. If you game when the computer needs more power than the charger can supply, this will be delivered by the battery. Now, yes, certainly that's correct, but having a performance setting which actually depletes the battery while still plugged in has been an issue with other laptops and definitely should not be the case for the Lenovo Slim 7 Pro X touting the X power feature with the, the perfect optimal balance between power and performance. I consequently followed up with Lenovo and gave a fairly lengthy response. The response that I got in turn I believe come from the manufacturer and it reads as follows. Normally you don't use the performance mode this should only be used on the desktop, so when running performance mode, Windows will push the unit to design limit, and that seems to be a prox 106 watts. The supplied charger of 100 watts should be fine when you don't change the performance settings, since Windows in general will run the best it can, based on the set level. I believe it to be very misleading in having settings in the official Lenovo Vantage app that actually drains the battery without specifying these conditions and when you should use it. When laptops are being reviewed, it's common practice to use performance setting in the benchmarking process, which would lead to higher scores, but based on a unsustainable power load when not using an external monitor. Connecting the laptop to a desktop setup with external monitor uh, did remove this issue, uh, as it especially removed the power draw from the screen. However, when trying this, I was unable to discern any significant performance increases um, especially as it opens up other limiting factors such as heat buildup. The Lenovo Vantage app has three power settings, extreme performance, intelligent cooling and battery saver. Intelligent cooling also have an additional option to enable automatic switching to extreme performance when the computer feels the need for it. When doing the gaming benchmarks, I have now tried performance, intelligent cooling with performance on and intelligent cooling with performance off. I was very glad to see that it's only the pure extreme performance setting that actually drains the battery, not the intelligent cooling with performance on. Starting off with power draw and temperatures, we can see that performance and intelligent cooling with performance on is very similar and draws mostly 70 watts for CPU and GPU combined 
and has a GPU power budget of up to 50 watts. Intelligent cooling with performance off does have total power draw spikes, but that's only due to the CPU and the, the GPU power is capped to 35 watts, so no boosting whatsoever. When looking at core clocks, we can see the similar picture here. Performance and intelligent cooling with performance on behaves nearly identical with clocks being able to top out at around 1600 to 1700 MHz. Intelligent cooling with performance off is limited to 35 watts for the GPU and maxes out at around 1400 MHz. Max core clock and core voltage for other circumstances I've noticed uh, is around 1700 MHz for the GPU clock and 0.9 volts. I have been able to increase the, the core clocks and also reduce the voltage through undervolting and I will get to that later. When looking at gaming benchmark scores, please keep in mind that I have focused on the relative performance for each power settings and not compared it against other laptops. I've used the standard Lenovo drivers and Nvidia has much newer graphics drivers and I have been forced to use DX11 in some instances which might also lead to non-optimal performance. No optimizations has also been made in the Nvidia control panel. I am fairly certain that these results can be increased fairly easily even without undervolting or similar processes. If you are interested, I will optimize the computer performance for gaming in a later video whilst also reducing power and heat. Jumping in to the gaming benchmarks, I have done most of the options with both 1080p, 1440p and also tried the Nvidia DLSS option on medium settings. Here we can see that performance and intelligent cooling with performance on is nearly identical while the intelligent cooling with performance off does experience some losses due to the limiting GPU power. However, the difference is smaller than expected and you can ex expect to lose around 10 to 15% in performance when running on intelligent cool with performance off. Looking at Cyberpunk, we have the same benchmarks and the, the results are fairly similar. The performance loss for intelligent cooling with performance off is the smallest at 1080p but then scales as we get to higher resolutions due to the GPU constraint. What's also interesting to see here is that the 1080p minimum FPS is uh, significantly lower for the intelligent cooling with performance off. Looking at Civilization 6, we see that the, the graphics performance is very similar and the CPU test for both performance intelligent cooling in both settings are nearly identical and that also tells you that the, the CPU is not as constrained with intelligent cooling with performance off rather the GPU with its 35 watts. 3D Mark Fire Strikes shows the biggest loss in performance with intelligent cooling with performance on and off both losing more than 10% of performance against performance setting. Combining these results, we see that intelligent cooling with performance on is almost equal to the pure performance mode apart from the synthetic fire strike benchmark. Intelligent cooling with performance off is around 10 to 15% slower at high resolutions, um, and that's mainly due to the, to the GPU cap of 35 watts compared to 50 watts. So, wrapping this up with only one sentence use intelligent cooling with automatic performance switching. Do not use extreme performance advantage when not connected to an external monitor, as it can drain the battery even when plugged in. Lenovo intends for you to use intelligent cooling with automatic performance switching, but this has never been communicated. The performance difference between extreme performance and intelligent cooling with automatic performance switching is minimal in the most instances anyway. Intelligent cooling with performance off is limited to 35 watts of GPU power, which means that the GPU will always be more constrained. It would have been fantastic to see a more dynamic scenario here, where the GPU was allowed to draw 40 to 45 watts of power, with the CPU instead receiving less power. As a sneak preview, I fully intend to use the intelligent cooling with performance enabled, but I also intend to manually decrease the power budget for the CPU in favor of the GPU. And that's mainly due to me not doing that much compute intensive work, and I prioritize a cool laptop and also optimized for gaming.
I have been started to play around with undervolting the GPU for more performance, as well as restraining the CPU power budget, both through disabling the boost mode as well as restricting the TDP of the CPU. And I can tell you that this provides more performance with lower noise and lower power draw and temperatures. So if you would like to see a specific video about that, please let me know in the comments. So the issue with performance mode using the battery to meet its power budget turned out to be of less importance, as the intelligent cooling with performance enabled almost matches the performance without using battery. But this is vital information that should be communicated by Lenovo, which is not the case. I'm again overall very pleased with the computer, as the build quality, the screen, keyboard, mouse, audio and performance is great. I would however prefer a slightly lower noise profile on the fans while gaming, but this can also be resolved with undervolting and restricting power to the CPU, which also improves gaming performance. And that's it for this video. If you like it, please give me a like and subscribe to the channel. Making these videos takes a lot of time and effort, so I would really appreciate it. Until next time, take care.